Senator Roberts. Thank you. Keep the sheep. Keep humans. We need to stop this live export ban. There's no grounds for it. We've seen a truncated inquiry, a sham inquiry. The Labor Party has not gone out and listened. They're just pushing green ideology to get green, prefer green voters' preferences in inner city electorates. And what about the human environment? Devastation to local communities. Devastation to people overseas who need food and good animal protein. The Export Control Amendment, ending live sheep exports by sea, Bill 2024, amends the Export Control Act 2020 to prohibit the export of live sheep by sea from Australia on the 1st of May 2028. The bill also includes money to paper over the cracks, the devastation that this measure will cause to rural and regional communities for a limited period. That money is going to be made available for a limited period only under severe limits. One would have thought that providing that money anyway to assist in an orderly transition on a suitable time frame would have made more sense. Then again, sense has no place in the feelings-driven policy development from the Albanese Labor government. Political, not economic, regardless of what, what the impact is on humans. As it stands, the $107 million fund is little compensation for an industry that generates $120 million a year directly and hundreds of millions more in flow-on effects to rural communities. $60 million of the money is going to be used to lay the groundwork for the next round of the government's plan to eliminate live cattle exports. Specifically, the mechanism is the specious animal welfare argument, including welfare of, welfare of animals in transport. Sheep and cattle welfare during transport will be used as an excuse to limit the movement of animals. Who benefits substantially from that trade? Not the Aboriginal communities in remote areas of Australia, who currently support themselves raising cattle and then need to transport that cattle a long distance to get them to market. This transport welfare measure will remove the opportunity of Aboriginal communities to support themselves, in turn making those communities reliant on government handouts. Dependent. Aboriginal communities are heavily represented in red meat production in areas of Western Australia that will be devastated with the loss of this trade. And the industry is attracting homeless from the cities, coming bush in search of work and accommodation. What a high price everyday Australians in rural areas are paying for the dirty deal from the Labor government for preferences from animal welfare groups and the Greens. Labor can't deny this dirty deal and doesn't deny the dirty deal. The announcement of Labor's policy on live animal exports came from one of the animal welfare groups, not from Labor. This bill lets city activists pat themselves on the back while ignoring the animal and human suffering caused from this ill-informed and poorly consulted bill. A sham inquiry, partial inquiry, that didn't consult everyone. This bill let city activists pat themselves, as I said, on the back while ignoring the animal and human suffering. While a government can talk about the bill being the product of consultation, the process was one of working backward from the desired outcome. How do we get to be seen to get this outcome? The correct process for the Office of Impact Assessment is to conduct, quote, meaningful consultation that considers the views of affected stakeholders, end of quote. That's not what happened. As I said, the sham inquiry in the lower, lower house. The National Farmers Federation submitted to the committee that they had to fight each step of the way for producers to have a fair hearing with the independent panel. The National Farmers Federation saw the industry's advice to the panel go unheeded in the final report. What was the point? Then we saw the minister go even further, rejecting key elements of the panel's advice to adopt even more radical ideas than the panel itself recommended. Welcome to government under the Labor Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese, MP. Ideology and dodgy preference deals with ill-informed fanatics is how the Labor Party rolls. And to hell with the human devastation. Look good, don't do good. The entire consultation of parliamentary process are a mockery of due process. It's an indictment on those in this chamber who go along with this sham for, for reasons that escape me. 
The Greens, of course, want to cause more hardship among the red meat industry with their amendment from Senator Faruqi, bringing this bill forward, if successful, to 2026. And I bet that's the deal done between the Greens and the Labor Party, to bring it forward to 2026 and setting immediate limits to export. Now, sheep have a five-month gestation and need to grow on for seven months before export. This means sheep are now under, under gestation now that will not be able to be exported under the Greens Amendment unless markets can be found at the last minute. The genetics, the parent animals, were bred specifically for the export trade and these will be bound for the abattoir. Meat contracts are let, let out years ahead because of the breeding cycle, so selling these animals is not likely. In fact, the cull has already started, with prices as low as 50 cents a kilogram through the sale yards in Western Australia and many lots are unsold, causing farmers to leave unsold animals at the sale yards for euthanasia. Perhaps city senators like Senator Faruqi and Senator Turrell, who is in support, can come over to Western Australia and help with the cull. Look these farmers in the eye. Look these sheep in the eye. The idea this bill and the Greens amendment is predicated on humane treatment of animals is Orwellian doublespeak. It will have the reverse effect. Rural communities are being hollowed out as a result of the policies of the Labor Greens government. The end game is to move protein consumption to lab-grown meat owned by Prime Minister Albanese's friends Bill Gates and BlackRock's Larry Fink, who the Prime Minister has met with during this parliamentary term. Farmers have no place in the Labor Greens' vision of a dystopian world of fake meats and fake food. This bill denies the truth that live sheep exports suffer a loss of life at exactly the same levels as animals in the field, if not better. The object of this bill is not the welfare of animals. It's an ideological objection to a diet that includes red meat. Ideology over humanity. And what of the, current, of the land currently under grazing? Well, I'm sure the climate carpetbaggers are already out in the bush measuring up for solar panels. Beautiful countryside will be covered in silicon cancer and somehow this is environmentally friendly. The Labor Greens government is not fit to govern. Let me give you some personal thoughts and I want to pass on from Senator Pauline Hanson, who was in Western Australia recently to listen and then the farmers spontaneously invited her to speak off the back of a truck. And as Pauline does and as I do, she did so. They mentioned the independence study done. No deaths. No deaths on ships. Of course, other senators have mentioned the MV Iwasi ship, on which was perpetrated the cash for cruelty scam. Hundreds of thousands of dollars paid apparently to a foreign stockman from a developing nation to treat animals cruelly, to kill an industry. And that's what Labor did. Fell for it and killing an industry. And the damage to farmers and communities and nation already done. 100,000 sheep especially bred for the live export overseas market. Not suitable for a local market, as I've said. Market for live sheep is already down because overseas buyers are looking elsewhere. They know what's coming from this government. They've seen the socialists operating and they're seeking other suppliers. And it hurts farmers across the whole of Australia because, for example, Tassie, Tasmanian farmers, sheep farmers, are sending sheep to the WA to make up for making up shipments. Remember the Gillard Labor government, cattle export ban, it belted the whole of Australia's beef grazing industry, the whole country. It had effects everywhere because of the flow on. Farmers told Senator Hanson in Western Australia recently, we'll have to shoot the animals we especially bred. She told me the look in their eyes shattered for the waste of their animals that they cared for. Communities are worried over there about farmers' mental health. If the government has any humanity, it won't force the farmers to shoot their own animals. The government can kill the sheep. Here's a question for the government. The European Union is the world's biggest exporter of sheep. Not Australia, the EU. What free trade agreements have Australia signed with the EU, the European Union? Has this Albanese Labor government done an agreement with the European Union. We've all seen fr free trade, so-called free trade. It's not fair trade at all. It hurts our country. We've seen that from both sides of the Uni Party, Labor and Liberal Nationals. The real reason, as I've said, for shutting down this export industry is to get Greens votes 
preferences in inner city eastern electorates. I want to talk briefly about the fact as to why I'm very pro-human. And I've spoken about it many times. I need to counter 80 years of anti-human propaganda, especially the last 60 years since the Club of Rome got into bed together with the United Nations and then the World Economic Forum. All to control people, to control property and to transfer wealth. There are three or four main assumptions that this anti-human campaign propagates. First of all, they say humans don't care. We'll talk about that in a minute. They say we're greedy, rapacious, uncaring, irresponsible. We just don't care. Secondly, they say humans are destroying our planet, when in fact the reverse is true. They say civilization is the environment's enemy. And they say, they say civilization and the environment are mutually exclusive. I'll, I'll address that in a minute. They say civilization and the environment are incompatible. And so we need to cease development. Because that's what they want. They want to stop human development. And senior leaders of the United Nations and the World Economic Forum, and including the late Murray Strong, have said that. They want to de-industrialise Western civilization. And they say our duty is to protect our planet. They say nothing about humans. They imply that humans need to be sacrificed for that. Well, here's the reality to 80 years of bull. These are observations. Everyone in this chamber right now, everyone watching on TV, is here because someone cared. When a foal is born to a mare, it pops out of the mare, struggles for about 20 minutes, and then starts cantering, then puts its head down and starts grazing with the herd. When every one of us as humans were born, we were completely helpless. The fact that anyone is in this room, anyone is watching, means that you're alive and means that you were cared for. We are completely helpless for a number of years. <clears throat> completely helpless. So whether our parents were good or bad or whatever, it mean, you're, the fact that you exist means that humans care. And humans care and they're based on care. The most caring humans got to propagate. The second thing, visit any country in the world, you'll see the developed cont continents have lower impact on the environment than the undeveloped con continents. For example, a person in a remote area of Africa, undeveloped, will defecate in the creek because he or she is too busy scrounging for their, for their child's next meal. Yet what we do is we mine black rock called coal red rock called iron ore, make steel, build dams, build water pipelines and get sanitation and, and water to our, to our communities. Developed nations have less impact on the natural environment. So that means human civilization and the natural environment are mutually dependent. We all know that our civilization won't have a future if we don't protect the environment. It's also clear that the environment has no future if we don't develop and civilise. That is clear. And yet we're told the opposite. Our duty is to enable humans to flourish. Our duty is to enable humans to flourish. Right throughout history, every generation has taken care of the younger generation and tried to make a better world for its younger generation. When we develop our, our country, and civilise, we actually protect the environment. Our goal is not to protect the environment, our goal is to protect humans and to civilise and for, for humans to flourish and civilise. That's why I'm very proud about speaking about our species. I also want to say that we need to have as an aim to restore our country and our planet for humans to abound and thrive and flourish. The goal is for humans to thrive. Farming is essential for civilization. Farming needs to be protected. Thomas Jefferson said, for cities to exist, we need farms. For farms to exist, we don't need cities. And then, as I mentioned briefly, the objective here is cultured lab meat. That's one of the globalist aims, the United Nations and the World Economic Forum. Humans re need real meat, animal fat. Who knew that the Greens are helping to sell cancerous cultured meat grown in slop 
in a bioreactor. People just want to be left alone and get on with their lives and get the government the hell out of our lives. Humans deserve food here and overseas.